Gang, another of two fantastic rook knives that I am currently uh, putting across my table to show you all about because this company is making fairly unique for what they are budget knives that function and are fit and finished really really well. So this one here is like the G10 handle type of um, flipper knife. So this isn't a frame lock, this is a line lock flipper. Um, and it is really really nicely done like all of our other stuff I've had so far. And this one is a bit on the bigger side. Let's do some size comparisons, shall we? So I'll bust out the Paramilitary 2 first. Most knife guys have held a PM2. It's pretty much the same size. You're actually getting a bit more blade in there. So this is you know, this isn't that medium to large EDC size. Uh, let's bust out the sinkage, the zero tolerance 0450, which is, you know, pretty narrow compared to it, you know, pretty pretty slender little little beastie once you've um you know got this big big old rook p105 out. 105k this one is called. This is the one thing I tell all the Chinese companies, give your knives names, fellas, you know, it makes us makes us feel for them more. It gives them a personality. Anyway. Um, the Spider Coat Endura, there we go. Still bigger, not much is bigger than the Endura in my collection. That handle, man, that big floppy handle just hanging over the edge of there. The big sort of, <laughs> you know. So yeah, it's it's a big knife, this one. And it does fill the hand. This is like a, a larger, perhaps, I don't know, hard use, probably, you know, probably not. But just if you want a knife that is more, um, you don't care about, you know, size and pocket as much, uh, you want a knife that's just, you know, good and comfy in hand. And this is super good and comfy in hand. Let's look at it from top to toe. So, right at the tip, you've got the tip of this fully flat ground, well, you know, almost fully flat ground blade. There's a swedge at the top here. Um, really nice, fine working piercing tip and a nice big broad blade, which does make it a very good slicing blade. So this one will carve through the cardboard a little bit easier than some of the other ones. Um, really, really well done, full, you know, no issues there at all with the grind lines or anything like that. Got a nice sharpening choil. All done really, really well. There you swedge adds a bit of flair. Uh, the blade thickness is about on par with the Endura again, so, you know, it's that sort of class of knife. The flipper tab and the locking system is all really, really well. So the flipper, no worries at all. Has a slight, listen, listen. Has a slight squeak to it, but that's because I have done nothing with it just yet. And you know what? Has really been bothering me too much. I've you know I've just carried it pretty much for today and had a bit of a play with it and that sort of thing. Um, and you know it's yeah, it's fine. Um, I'm sure with a dose of WD-40. In fact, let's see if I can blast it out now. Dose of WD-40. It's already gone. So now what we do is we give it a shake, 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 shake. Just jam my shirt in and around that pivot there, get the real excess WD off. And then I'll just stick some of my nano oils in there because WD-40 is not a lubricating oil in the sense that it doesn't stay around. It actually dries out and gets rather sticky. So stick some of this good stuff in the pivot there. All around here, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is about the extent that I get when I'm oiling my knives. Um, really, I don't take them apart as if I can help it out. It's just not me. But look, the squeal is gone. So obviously just a little sort of um, factory kind of greasing issue or something like that. Oh, and the review table has got a smattering of lube on it now as well. Um, just like how we all like our review tables. And um, yeah, so the blade is really well finished. The action is really, really good. That squeak doesn't affect anything. It's just a little squeak. And as you can see now, it is gone. The handle, the handle is layered at G10. And this is $40 knife. You're starting to think, whoa, that's, you know, they've got layered G10. And so then when they do this, um, when they, you know, get their, their buffing wheel onto it or their grinding wheel onto it, it makes this cool little, you know, reveals the layers. So really, really cool. And they've done them in sensible places. So that's, they've actually put them in, you know, that's where your thumb goes if you grip like this. That's where your thumb goes if you grip like this. It, it's it's well done. A bit on your palm there. So it's a well done machined G10 handle. Really, really nicely done. Really hand filling as well. Um, this is one of the more comfortable knives around at the moment. Your thumb just lands perfectly in that jimping there. It's a single grip kind of knife, really. Like there's no forward finger trial or any of that, you know, super cool business. But really, um, it's it's a nice big hand filling knife. So if you're fond of the larger knives, if you're not like me, see, I'm a bit of a, 
I'm a bit of a whore for the thinner knives like these. I like the ones that don't take up much space this way. So say if you compare it to so that one there, like close, that's, you know, let's look at, say flipper excluded even, you know, it's an extra square or two, you know, it's extra two squares almost really. Um, so that's like the Sinkovich. I love knives like that. They're just like my dream knives, the really thin ones that I can have my phone next to. So it's a bit fatter, so if that, but if that doesn't trouble you at all, then this is probably going to be your favourite of the Rooks, I reckon, because, oh man, is it smooth, and is it comfy to use, and it has a really good practical blade. Made again of the 14C 28N steel, which does seem to be some some genius at the Sandvik company said, hey, let's start selling it to China, yeah? And they've sent, <laughs> in, the, in the Austrian <laughs> Sandvik factory, I'm so sorry to all of my viewers <laughs> in that part of the world. But yeah, there's someone said, hey, let's sell some, oh, no, nah, I'm not even gonna bother. They said, hey, let's sell some of our steel to China and they can make knives that are therefore instantly better than all the HCR 13 garbage knives. And look how well, look how well we're doing. So. Um, looking further down the handle, you've again got one of the ugliest clips known to man. What is with that? Ah, oh, busy, busy, busy. Either it didn't need this, or it didn't need this hole here. Um, it probably didn't need either of them really, but there you go. Um, that blue anodized stud, it doesn't really match, it's the wrong blue. It's obviously just a clip, see the other one's got the same one. It's just the clip for like this series of knife kind of thing. It doesn't really match anything. If the pivot was the same color, you know, it's not quite doing it for me. Should have just been silver, but not the end of the world. It does hold the knife in the pocket just fine. It's got some spring to it and it's, it's, it's just just fine, no problems at all. A uh, black G10, G10 backspacer, and the liners are, you know, the liner lock is really well done. It's about 50% there, which is all you want. And then there is some milling on the inside of the other liner as well, just to get that weight down. In terms of weight, let's see how much it weighs. This knife is a 147 grams. So compared to like a ZT, which is 88 grams, compared to the Mantra, which is 85 grams, you know, it's a heavy knife. It, even the other stainless steel is, is lighter, so you're getting a pretty big beefy blade for your, um, you know, for your 148 grams. Some people that, you know, it doesn't matter at all to. I'm not a big weight guy. I don't care as much about the weight. I just like thin. That's, that's me. <laughs> Long and skinny, please. That's this guy. Um, so cool. Uh, the Rook um, P105K, this one is. K might just mean the color of something. Who knows? but it's a really, really good knife. Once again, from Rook, uh, they're the knife division of Phoenix Flashlights. Um, they just seem to be emerging um, lately from um, China. As again, all Chinese you know, stuff. So as I said, I've, I've said in the exact same other Rook video that's uploading, my philosophy is you either buy Chinese or you buy no Chinese. Um, I think lots of the critics, I've, I've had like, how dare you buy Chinese, blah, blah, blah. And they're literally sending that from their iPhone, which is made in China. So it's just part of our world, isn't it? You can resist, I guess, in small batches. I don't think the knife industry is the place to start resisting uh, the expansion of Chinese capitalism. <laughs> I think I think maybe like the car industry or the electronics industry might be, you know, that might make more of a dent, <laughs> you know, fight the power and whatnot. But you know, you're either into Chinese or you're, you're not and you're really against it. It seems to be the way. Um, I'm not fussed. I'm, I guess I'm in the middle. So I'm just not fussed. If it's a good knife, I don't really care where it's from. Um, the best thing about these Rook knives, and I said on the other ones too, I'm really sorry to repeat myself. They, and I know this probably does look like some other kind of knife, like vaguely, but they seem to be more original designs than say you're getting from Ganzo or some San Remu, where like this knife isn't, this is a line still SR1, really. Um, it's longer and a bit skinny, but they've got that's the look they're going for and then they've got the sort of pirated axis lock there as well These are fine for like around the house, but they feel a bit seedy to me Whereas uh, like in San Remu 710 like the Chris Reeves Sabenza 710 knockoff seems a bit seedier to me than than these because these are they Seem individually designed like they it's not I've had a bit of a look and there's not a great deal that looks exactly like this um, Yeah, I'm sure there's elements, but there's always elements. I mean Unless you get something really amazing, like say a, um, you know, what's his name? Uh, Todd, so say if you got a Todd Begg knife, or say if you get like a, um, a, a Jens Anso knife, or so, you know, something like that, that's, you know, they've got their flourishes and signatures and things. Lots of knives just kind of look a bit like a, a, a version of another knife, but you know, they're just not as, these ones aren't as completely pirated as some of the other Chinese firms, is what I'm getting at. <laughs> so there we go. 
All right, guys. Well, thank you very much for watching this review. Um, I would suggest going to Blades of Oz. I'll put a link down below of all of his um, Rook knives. Have a look. I reckon they'd all be good. Like, three down, three complete, you know, swinging connections. Just swing. I was going to say, what's the opposite to swing and a miss? <laughs> Whatever that is. Three strikes. Is it strikes? A strike is good in bowling, but it's bad everywhere else. Three bowling strikes from um, Rook so far. Not baseball strikes, because that's bad. Unless you're on the um, unless you're on the team that you want to get out. Oh, sports. Uh, look, anyway, watch my B channel about sports if you're um, if you're interested in uh, more horrible sports commentary. I'm just kidding. There's no B channel about sports. Anyway, um, a really good knife once again, and strongly recommended. You have a look at Rook.